When you're hinge cutting trees, there's a lot of safety gear you've got to have in the woods. So start with chaps to protect your legs. You're using a chainsaw. That is a, you know, that is a sharp instrument. It's non-forgiving if you were to happen to slip and hit your leg. Um, you want to have a helmet, eye protection, ear protection, uh, leather gloves. You're going to be working with splinters and some thorn trees. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff can be a bit dangerous, so especially if you've never done this before, I recommend you have a partner with you because something dangerous could happen and if you're out there by yourself, nobody knows where you're at. You know, for the, for the habitat manager that's really into this, he's long term, he wants to stick with this for his property. You know, when it comes to a chainsaw, I use a steel 201T. It's a professional arborist saw. The handle and throttle control is up on top so it's well balanced, it only has a 14 inch bar on it, it's lightweight, and you cut all day, you're going to get so tired using that big old heavy saw. So get yourself a light saw that runs quick and cuts well. Um, when it comes to uh, wedges and hammers, you know, I use a variety of plastic wedges, some 6 inch wedges, 10 and 12 inch wedges. You're going to use that when you get into your bigger trees and you want to actually force it to go in a direction that maybe gravity wants it to go otherwise. So you're going to start the cut halfway through, your assistant's going to drive a plastic wedge in. If he drives it in and it happens to hit the chain, it's not going to hurt the chain. You do that with a steel wedge and now you've got to get a new chain or sharpen it. Um, I also use a hinge tool and that's got a big hook on it with some sharp teeth to bite into the bark. And that's usually in the six to eight foot range. You hook that up on the tree to gently pull it down, especially a lot of your smaller ones. You get into your larger trees, you use it more from a pushing standpoint. And then when you get into the detail work and you're actually doing travel corridors and bedding areas, I use a, you know, a parachute cord, 550 cord to pull down living saplings onto the foundation trees. And then when you're clearing out areas for travel corridors and, and working down into the bedding areas and getting limbs and trees cut out of the way where the deer are going to approach, I use a handsaw on clippers. I happen to use a, a silky Zubot handsaw and some good sharp clippers, you know. And these are just the minimum. And, and often, if I know I'm going to do detail work, I'll pre-cut maybe 30 or 40 six-foot lengths of parachute cord, put it around my neck when I'm going into work on those bedding areas. I've got it right here with me. And you're pulling down and tightening everything up and doing that close work. When I mention, you know, trees that are easy to hinge cut, uh, hickories and white oaks, uh, ironwoods, the fibers are tight. And as you hinge cut three quarters of the way th through it, and it falls over horizontally, it stays intact, and about 25 to 30 percent of that tree will have a really nice radius on it, and the Cambrian layer stays tight to the base of that tree, supplying all the water and nutrients, so that tree can continue to grow and survive for 10, 20, 30 years or more. Some of your dangerous ones that I try to stay away from are uh, cottonwood. That tends to be a soft, kind of a a, a soft pethy tree and oftentimes you'll get the saw three quarters of the way through it and it'll tend to split and jump off the stump on you. Uh, we were cutting a walnut, that's another one. We cut one of those today, that split off, it didn't hang on real well. How to do family bedding areas, communities is what I basically call them. And what you're going to do is you're going to come into a, a fairly flat open area where deer aren't currently bedding but you'd like to have them bedding and you're going to hinge cut a majority of the trees about armpit high and the idea is to have them laying horizontal and you're going to cut several trees you know it could be an area that's a quarter acre it could be an area that's three acres so once you've cut all these uh, horizontal trees and say you've got about 80 percent of the trees down it's a fairly large area now you're going to go into each and every one of these locations and you're going to take your clippers and your handsaw even your chainsaw and you're going to cut out the limbs you want these deer to be able to go in under these overhead canopies and be able to stand up, lay down, get back out. You've also got to make sure that you're not putting deer anywhere where they're dead-ended. You know, deer don't like to walk in to be boxed in. So you've got to make sure you've got to have at least one or two, you know, escape routes in these bedding areas. And so there's a lot of detail work using the handsaw and using the clippers. And you're going to rake it all out. You're actually going to rake out ovals every five to six feet apart, maybe 10 yards apart. Oftentimes I cut dead trees that are, say, in that 8 to 12 inch diameter, cut them in about two to three foot lengths, carry those logs over, and I set them next to the raked out ovals. And those are backstops for deer to put their backs against. And I'll put those logs in a variety of different locations, some on the north, some on the south, and that way, regardless of the wind direction, these deer can come in there, put their back up against that log, which they're always comfortable by doing, 
and they can always have the wind of their back or the wind of the face depending on, on the, you know, the weather conditions.